The greatest fear people have is that of being themselves. They want to be 50 Cent or someone else. They do what everyone else does, even if it doesn't fit where and who they are. But you get nowhere that way. Your energy is weak and no one pays attention to you. You're running away from the one thing that you own, what makes you different. I lost that fear. And once I felt the power that I had by showing the world I didn't care about being like other people, I could never go back. 50 Cent. What's up, Internet? My name is Trident Lion, and this is another book animation summary on Robert Greene and 50 Cent's book, The 50th Law. On this channel, Trident Lion, it contains various content all geared to help you level up in various different ways. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. But now let's get into this book summary. What is The 50th Law? Simply put, fear nothing. Fear is the oldest and strongest emotion known to people. It's something that's deeply inscribed in our own subconscious and nervous systems. Fear creates its own self-fulfilling dynamic. As you give into it, you lose energy and momentum. The 50th law is based on the following premise, that humans generally have little control over circumstances. However, the 50th law states that there is one thing we actually can control which is the mind, the mindset which we respond to those events around us. And if we are able to overcome the anxieties in our life and forge a fearless attitude, something remarkable can occur for you. Those who practice the 50th law in their lives all share certain qualities, supreme boldness, fluidity, and a sense of urgency. This gives them a unique ability to shape their circumstances towards their desires. In this book, 50 Cent and Robert Greene break down several chapters to help you achieve an understanding what the 50th law is, which is to fear nothing. To efficiently go through this summary, I'm going to break down each of the sections as a principle. Ten principles total, and each one of these ten principles can play a significant part in helping you fear nothing. And if you haven't already, definitely pick up a copy of this book for yourself. You can find a link for it in the description below. To execute the 50th law, you have to be bold. And to be bold requires a high degree of confidence. For 50 Cent growing up in Southside Queens with lack of parents gave him a tremendous amount of adversity that most people don't have to face. For 50 Cent to achieve the level of success that he did, he had to execute the 50th law. He had to fear nothing because there was fear all around him. So now, let's talk about the first principle. See things for what they are. It was 50 Cent that said that reality is my drug. The more I have of it, the more power I get and the higher I feel. This is actually very stoic as well. Rather than wishing for things to be the way you wish them to be, instead wish them to be as they are. It takes constant effort to carve a place for yourself in this ruthless competitive world that we have. By focusing your attention on what's going around you, you will gain a sharp appreciation for what makes some people advance and why others fall behind. By seeing through people's manipulations, you can turn them around. The firmer your grasp on reality, the more power you will have to alter it for your purposes. Losing your sense of reality can play a part in the collapse of entire empires. The citizens of ancient Rome's minds were hungered for newer and newer forms of escape. Petty political battles consumed their intention more than larger dangers that were on the outskirts of the empire. Ancient Rome fell well before the invasion of the barbarians. It collapsed from the collective softness of its citizens' minds who decided to turn their back on reality. You cannot stop the tide of fantasy and escapism sweeping an entire culture. But you can stand as an individual who chooses to not give in to escaping and choose to embody. Appreciate and be grateful that you have the greatest weapon in all of nature, the rational conscious mind. You need to be able to assess what is happening without your ego or emotions coloring your perceptions. During moments when others lose their balance, you will find your balance relatively easy and as a person who cannot be easily ruffled by events 
This will attract attention and power. Principle number two, self-reliance. When you work for others, you are at their mercy. Strive to work for yourself. The ultimate freedom is to be self-reliant. True ownership, however, can only come from within. It comes from a disdain from anybody that infringes upon your mobility. True ownership comes from the confidence in your ability to make your own decisions and from your ability to control the use of your time in a constant pursuit of education and improvement. Principle number three, opportunism. Every single negative situation contains a possibility for something positive. It is how you look at it that matters. If you lack resources, then that forces you to be more inventive with the little things that you have. If there are circumstances you cannot control, make the best of them. That is the ultimate alchemy, to transform all such negativities into advantages and power. It was 50 Cent that said, every negative is a positive. The bad things that happen to me, I somehow make them good. That means you cannot do anything to hurt me. I love this perspective. I think it is amazing. So even if someone brings something to him of harm, he's gonna learn and grow from it. Principle number four, keep moving. Don't try to micromanage everything. You lose control in the long run. What you have to do is let go with the chaos that presents itself to you. Keep moving, changing your appearances to fit the environment. Don't let anything disrupt your flow. Principle number five, know when to be bad. You have to get over any general fears that you have about confronting people, or you will find it extremely difficult to assert yourself in the face of those who are more cunning and ruthless. Choose to master the art of knowing when and how to be bad using deception, manipulation, and outright force at the appropriate moments. Everyone operates with a flexible morality when it comes to their self-interest. By becoming aware of this, you're simply just making it more conscious and effective. Now the first step in overcoming this is to realize that the ability to deal with conflict is a function of inner strength. When you are feeling scared and weak, you have the sense that you cannot handle any kind of confrontation. Principle number six, lead from the front. To gain a sense of power and also influence, it's better to lead from the front lines. You must practice what you preach. If you're a leader and you're fearful, hesitant to take any risk, or if you're overly concerned about your ego and reputation, then this variably filters its way through the entire group and makes effective action impossible. Influence your followers through the proper spirit, which is done through actions, not words. Principle number seven, know your environment from the inside out. To reduce the amount of fear that you have, know your environment. Be aware of all of your surroundings. Have a relationship to your environment. Get an inside feel for what is happening all around you and never lose touch with your home base. Principle number eight, mastery. Respect the process. And one of the great ideas from this book is to achieve either fearlessness or the sense of being able to fear less. By fearing less, it can give you more energy, more momentum, more of a chance and a higher probability of achieving your goals and dreams. Understand that if you wanna achieve something great, it's not gonna to come to you easily and it's not gonna to come to you fast. So get the idea of the get rich quick or become successful quick ideas out of your mind. It is much more practical and it is much more respectable to do it through a gradual improvement of becoming better and better at something and achieving a sense of mastery. All the fools in life want things fast and easy. A lot of this comes from boredom. Boredom is the great enemy as well as fear. Your goal is to reach the ultimate skill level, an intuitive feel for what must come next. And one of the greatest ways to achieve this is to choose to do something that you love. By choosing to do something that you love, it'll naturally give you that energy and boost needed to take action. If you're not fully in love with something that you're doing, it's easier to give up and quit and not want to progress forward. It was 50 Cent that said, most people can't handle boredom. That means 
They can't stay on one thing until they get good at it, and they wonder why they're unhappy. Fall in love with the process. Your pleasure should come in the mastering of what you're trying to achieve. Realize that the real secret, the real formula for power in this world lies in accepting the ugly reality that learning requires a process. And this in turn demands patience and the ability to endure hard work. There are no shortcuts, so get those out of your mind. Principle number nine, push beyond your limits. Believe in yourself. Set phenomenal goals, high goals. When you limit yourself, you limit your results. When you limit your actions and your goals, if your reach is limited, then you are pretty much helpless in the face of the obstacles and adversity that you'll face on the road to achieve the vision that you have. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you're destined for something great. Attain a sense of self-worth. Take risks that will increase your chances of success. And people will follow you if they know where you're going. So cultivate an air of certainty and boldness. Understand that you are a mystery even to yourself. You begin life as something completely unique. A mix of qualities that are never to be repeated in the history of the universe. You are much more chaotic, fluid, and awesome than the surface character. So realize your untapped potential and possibility and choose to become great. And the last principle, principle number 10. Confront your mortality. One of the greatest takeaways that 50 Cent got when he was shot was that he overcame the fear of death. The fear of dying is huge for so many people. And it is that fear that has cripples them. Confront the reality that we are all going to die. It will happen one day, but there is no sense in suffering every other day that you are alive. It was in a Steve Jobs speech where he said, If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. There is no reason not to follow your heart. If you can overcome the fear of death, then there is nothing left to fear. Understand that to keep death out of your mind by bathing your minds with routines, we create an illusion that it is not around us in any form. But we lose all sense of connection to something larger, to life itself. We are not really living until we come to terms with our own mortality. By being aware of the sublime all around us, it is a way to convert our fears into something meaningful and active. Now in the end, this is a book about a particular philosophy of life that can be summed up as follows. Your fears are a kind of prison that confine you within a limited range of action. The less you fear, the more power you will have, and the more fully you will live. It is our hope that the 50th law will inspire you to discover this power for yourself. One of the greatest takeaways that I got out of this book was to help me see that going after your dreams is possible. And if you get anything out of this book animation summary, I hope it gives you some extra push to help you Take action upon your dreams and reduce the fear that you have. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. This has been another book animation summary on the 50th law. If you like this video, please leave me a like. And if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Comment below what other book animation summaries you would like to see done in the future. And as always, until the next video, remember to always be learning, always be creating, and always be inspired. Tonight